Hello everyone, I'm Simisha and I'm an application engineer in Typhoon Hill. Today I'm going to show you our new protective functionality for our new DER generic components. The protective function that I'm going to show you is low voltage write through or LVRT. From the 2020.3 version of the software, the LVRT protective function will be included in all inverter based DER generic components. The parameterization for the LVRT protecting function you can find in the grid code step. The main functionalities of this new feature are DER will stay connected required period of time. This period of time is defined by the selected grid code. DER will support the grid with active and reactive power during low voltage on the terminals. Also, the LVRT functionality can be defined by standardized LVRT requirements or custom requirements. Enabling the LVRT inverter will inject reactive power to the grid at one point and it will increase the voltage uh, value on the terminals. Also configuration of the reactive power contribution is done through SCADA input. This new protective function I'm going to show you using our battery ESS generic component. To find that example, let's use our example portal. Let's go to microgrid, energy storage, energy ESS generic, battery inverter implemented by using generic component. Let's open this model. As you probably know, the main motivation for this new generic component is that, compared to our legacy component, it provides easier and more practical parameterization from the system integrator's point of view. Also, it includes new functionalities expected to be found in real-life applications, such as protection, sync check, and so on. As you know, generic system has two parts. One is generic UI, which is used for interface between generic components in the I.O. The second part is generic component. This part is implemented using signal processing and signal controlled voltage sources. Mathematical model is implemented using signal processing. As I mentioned before, to configure LVRT requirements, you can go to grid codes and then here you can select the LVRT requirement. Also, you can plot LVRT curve. Now, let's compile this model. The battery ESS generic example has its own SCADA panel. In this SCADA panel, you can see that we have grid interface group where you can find some basic measurements. Also, in sub-panel battery ESS interface, you can see that we have uh, one gr bigger group which is called inverter control and status and also some measurements. This SCADA panel is a little bit modified for the LVRT test purposes. Now let's run the simulation. Let's enable the inverter and let's use operate operation mode grid following. Now, active power reference is 1 per unit and reactive power reference is 0 per unit. Now, let's enable LVRT. And let's use uh, Q contribution to 5%. Now, let's run LVRT test. This test will decrease voltage on the terminals and start the capture. Also, this test case shows how LVRT works. Here we can see that battery ESS injects active and reactive power, power during low voltage transitions. This period of time is defined by LVRT requirements. Also, injection of the reactive power is defined by the Q contribution slope. After approximately one second, battery inverter will go off state. 
To summarize, in this video I present you our new protective function in inverter-based DER generic component. Also, I'll show you how to use it and where to find our example model. In this video, you saw how to define LVRT requirements, test it and observe it. Thank you for watching and bye.